Welcome to Let's Go Live, I'm Maddie. Morning, I'm Greg, and all together now, we, we are live. live! It is our 80th episode of Let's Go Live. Can you believe it? 80th. I know. Eight zero. Yeah. Woo! Um, in fact, <laughs> we are fast approaching the first birthday of Let's Go Live, one year since our first live show. Um, and of course, we're having a party. And of course, you're all invited. More information about that at the end of today's show. Today, though, lined up for you, we have uh, your usual dose of science activities with an injection of fun facts and an awkward selfie. I see what you're doing there, because today we are talking about vaccines. Yeah, we're going to be asking what is a vaccine and how do vaccines work? Yes, um, a group of people who can answer those questions and many, many more is UKRI, who are kindly supporting this week of Let's Go Live. UK Research and Innovation funds cutting edge science and research, everything from investigating black holes to the Antarctic to the future of gaming. Mm -hmm. And they've recently given lots of support for the development of COVID-19 vaccines. Talking of which, they have put us in touch with one of the scientists who is helping make vaccines to help reduce the spread of the virus. And we're gonna be chatting to her later on in the show. So let's get straight to our first question. Okay. What is a vaccine? Okay, well, a vaccine is a type of medicine that helps our bodies fight off a harmful kind of germ, uh, such as a virus, and hopefully that will protect us from ever getting sick with it. Yeah, so in our last show, we learned about uh, the pathogens, the germs, how they could be bacteria, viruses, mm -hmm. fungi, or parasites, um, and that we've got an internal army ready to fight them off. Right, and that internal army is our immune system. There's a whole team of white blood cells that are always ready and prepared to attack any germ invaders. But if our immune system is so good as it's as so... <laughs> <laughs> if our immune system is so good at its job, yeah. why do we need a vaccine? Well, that is actually a really good question. But to find out the answer to that, let's recap a little bit about what we learned about the immune system and how it fights off germs. So I think to do this, we should bring back some of our favourite micro microbe characters, yes. um, Virus Gregorius and the White Blood Cell Crew. You might remember this. <laughs> Sometimes when a germ like a virus sneaks into your body, your white blood cells will instantly recognise it as an invader. If this happens, the white blood cells will chase after the virus and they will get rid of it. But the white blood cells will only recognise a virus like this if they've seen it before or if they've already been told what it looks like. Yes, yeah, we saw there that white, the white blood cell mm -hmm. held up a picture of the virus, right? So yeah. it knew who to look out for. Um, right. It recognised it, it went over, it got rid of it. Mm -hmm. But what happens when a brand new type of pathogen, a germ, a virus, sneaks into your, uh, into your body and your immune system hasn't seen it before? What happens when the white blood cells don't recognise right, it. Right, if they don't recognise it. Well, if that happens, then we might get sick because that virus, uh, it will might start to upset some of our body cells and stop them from working properly and that's what makes us ill. Yeah. But our immune system, in that case, isn't just sitting around doing nothing. While we're sick, it's actually hard at work figuring out what this new intruder is and it's working out how to get rid of it. How does it do that? Well, it learns, it works this out using something called antibodies. Ooh, yes. Now, to fight off a new virus, a type of white blood cell called a B cell makes little markers called antibodies and they fit onto the surface structures of the new virus. Each antibody matches the shape of the surface structure, fitting over it and making it useless. And those surface structures are like the virus's tools. Without them, the virus can't get into the body's cells meaning it can't make us ill. <laughs> the antibodies do something as well, actually. They also mark the virus as an invader, like little red flags, yeah. which tell other kinds of immune cells to come along and gobble the virus up, a little bit like um, the bin lorry taking out the rubbish. I like that idea, yeah. <laughs> so when I feel a little bit poorly, when I've got a, a cough or a cold, it's likely what's happening is that um, a virus, a new type of germ, right, has entered my body, and it's just taken a bit of time for my immune system to make those antibodies to make that virus useless, right, to yeah. mark it for removal. So the good news is, if that same germ then invades mm -hmm. my body again in the future, 
my body will know how to get rid of it straight away and I shouldn't feel poorly. Yeah, that's exactly right. But the problem is that some germs make us a little bit sick. So we Mm. might get a bunged up nose or get a little tickly cough, but other germs might make us very very sick and it's these kind of germs these sort of viruses that can actually be very dangerous so scientists and doctors have put in a lot of work to stop people from ever getting sick with these germs in the first place and the result of all of that hard work are vaccines exactly exactly a vaccine is a type of medicine that keeps you from getting sick in the first place. It helps your immune cells recognise a bad germ, even if they haven't seen it before. So vaccines are usually a liquid, Mm -hmm. uh, and we usually give them in an injection, which is called a vaccination. And I guess the next question then is, what is inside a vaccine Mm -hmm. to help protect us from getting sick? What's inside a vaccine? Well, the answer to that is kind of surprising why what is inside a vaccine germs germs now hang on hang on hang on but we know that some germs can make us sick why do we want to put germs in our body well a vaccine doesn't contain the harmful germ that could make us very sick instead vaccines can contain uh, maybe a dead version of the germ or bits of the germ that we want to get protection against. Okay, so how do we get protection (laughs) against the active dangerous germs by putting dead germs or bits of germs in our body? Well, what's really clever is that our immune system can't really tell the difference. It reacts to the dead germs or the bits of these germs in exactly the same way, in the same way it would treat a new invading dangerous germ. Uh, So it it will do the same thing. It will start to make antibodies to attach to all of those sticky out bits, the surface structures, and then it will remember it the next time. This is a little bit like practicing. Exactly. Right. Basically, what you're doing is the vaccine gives your immune system a chance to practice, to meet Mm -hmm. a version of that germ, right, or a bit of that germ, whatever it is, uh, a bit that can't hurt us so that it can practice on it. It can make those antibodies and protect us in the future if that bad germ gets in. Right. You know what? I've got an idea. Why don't we act this out just to make it a little bit clearer? Um, I'm going to be, hang on, I'm going to be the white blood cell crew again. So I'm putting my... uh, White blood cell hat on. Cool. Greg, are you happy to be virus Gregorius again? <laughs> Always. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. Whilst Greg gets uh, into his virus Gregorius get up, um, here we've got another friend, Dave. Da, 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 da. Dave has, well, he's, a bet- he's better since our Tuesday show. So he wanted to play along and he is going to play the part of the vaccine. So Dave is actually dressed up as bits of uh, of a bit of the vaccine. Um, now, what's important to remember here is that Dave looks a little bit like Virus Gregorius, but he's not. Dave isn't dangerous. All Dave is doing is wearing the surface structures, the just bits of the dangerous Virus Gregorius. So let's imagine that a doctor or a nurse has given somebody a vaccination so let's say that's that that's me here. And now what that does is lets me, the white blood cells, sort of practice and I can go, oh, okay, so this is new. It's not dangerous, but what I can do is start to make antibodies. So I'm now gonna go, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna maybe put this antibody here and this here. And what I'm doing is making these surface structures useless. But what I don't necessarily realize is that it's preparing me for what will happen if the real active virus Gregorius comes along, which it has done now. So because I've always already practiced on these surface structures that were inside the vaccination, now the real one has come along, I can get into action really quickly and I can immediately stop my human body that I'm protecting from getting ill. Like that. There you go, because I had them ready to go. Nice. Oh, no, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Got it. 
<laughs> you get the idea. Get the idea. <laughs> awesome. Um, is this a good time for a, an awkward, very awkward selfie? Okay, all right. So I'm in the white blood cells. We've got Greg, who's dressed up as bits of our vaccination. And uh, Greg, go on. You are the actual virus. Okay. Are you ready? It, it, it's, it's pretty awkward. <laughs> ready for an awkward selfie? Here it comes. Right. <laughs> One, two, three. It's the awkward selfie. <laughs> oh, if anybody anymore. is brand new, that would have been really confusing. We take an awkward selfie. It's an opportunity for you to grab a photo with us for a laugh, because oh. usually it looks a bit silly. Feel free so to share them go. on social media. We love to see where you're watching the show. Um, at Laddie Mo, at vaccine, Gregfoot. Vaccine Dave. By Dave the vaccine. I'm going to take this off now, I By think. By Dave the vaccine. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, where were we? Where were we? Hang on. Um, oh, yeah. Here's something really important that we need to remember. Right. So getting the vaccine for virus Gregorius mm -hmm. doesn't protect you from every kind of virus or mm -hmm. dangerous germ that you're ever going to meet. All right. Yeah. A, a vaccine is always specific. Yeah, which is why we get vaccinated maybe more than once in our lives. Mm. And we set you a challenge to make your own viruses at home. And just like real life, all of your viruses are totally different and they all have their own unique sticky out bits, those surface structures. Should we have a little look at some of your viruses? Yeah, let's see what you've been up to. Okay, all right, here's the first one. Uh, so Sophie and Freya, they made viruses with pasta. Sophie's virus gives people a rash and Freya's makes people sick. Uh, Next up we have Sophia. Sophia has made two virus germs. One makes people snotty, the other oh. one causes a fever. Oh. Uh, Naomi and Ruben, they used Kinex on their viruses, Viomi and Rubenella. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Phoebe made a coronavirus using Play-Doh uh, and pipe cleaners. Oh, nice idea. Uh, Pippa has made a virus, a bacteria and a parasite with teeth. <gasps> uh, the virus causes a snotty nose, itchy eyes and coughing. Oh, nasty. Phoebe, Jessie and Edith have each made viruses with a whole bunch of craft materials looking awesome. Uh, Tippy and Momoko, they've used craft sticks and paper straws to make theirs. We have Thomas uh, making a virus using straws with Play-Doh balls on the end. Love that. Very artistic. And last with this batch, Martha and her brother made loads of germs using paper, sequins and other crafty materials. So there you go. Did you notice that every one of your viruses was different? They each had their own unique surface structures. And that means to get protection from all your nasty viruses, I would need a different vaccine for each one. If they were dangerous enough, we'd need a vaccine. Now, lots of people all over the world right now are getting vaccinated uh, to protect them from an illness called COVID-19 that is caused by a type of coronavirus. And um, as of right now, at the start of March, over 20 million people in the UK have received the coronavirus vaccine in just two months, which is very impressive. Yeah. Do you know anybody who has already had a vaccine? Maybe you know someone who's helping give vaccines. Why don't you let us know in the live chat right now if you're yeah. watching live? Yeah, maybe you know someone yeah, who's specially trained to be giving those viruses. Yeah, my mum's not giving vaccines, but my mum's actually helping at a vaccination centre. Yeah, she's helping in the car park. Thanks, Mum. Very awesome. Very <laughs> awesome. Um, we haven't had the vaccine yet. No. We've got a bit of bit time to wait. We shouldn't have to wait too long, though. Maybe just like a couple of months, I think. Mm. Um, but can you remember any vaccines that you've had in the past? I yeah, I've had quite a few. Yeah. Um, I've been quite lucky. I've got to travel around the world on yeah. on a whole bunch of different adventures. Um, and in different countries, we sometimes find uh, illnesses caused by dangerous germs that we don't have here at home in the UK. Mm. So it's a good idea to get a vaccine to protect you against that an illness, against that germ before yeah. you travel. So uh, yeah, I've had vaccines for a whole range of different germs, um, which was great because it meant that I was able to go and do those adventures. And you knew that when you were there, you'd be safe. So that's yeah, always a good thing. exactly. Day. What about you? I have had quite a few that I can remember as well. Again, mostly for travel. Yeah. Um, what was it like actually having the vaccine? Oh, okay. So actually having an injection. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me personally, uh, there have been times when I didn't feel it at all. Mm. Sometimes it feels like a little pin prick. Uh, I remember once, like one time it feels a bit, a bit like a pinch. Mm. Um, so it can be uncomfortable, but actually it's what it feels like afterwards. It sort of feels like you fall, you know, when you fall fallen asleep on your arm and your arm feels a bit heavy. Yeah, so sometimes <laughs> people feel nothing again, like the yeah. day after. And sometimes people are like, oh, I've got a bit of a dead arm, like I've fallen asleep yeah, on it. Yeah, it's very yeah. uncomfortable, but it's fine. But I think the important thing is that when you're getting a vaccine or an injection is to think this is the best thing for my body to be as smart as possible to yeah. protect me from ever getting sick from whatever you know the disease it's protecting you against is i find that um when i've had a vaccine the best thing is just to look away and sing a little song to myself 
<laughs> That's a nice That's idea. Some... What do you think? Uh, well, I think now I'd go for it's a vaccination <laughs> song. How about that one? Yeah. <laughs> to the tune of the awkward selfie song. I see what you did there. Shall we try it together? It's the vaccination song. Done. Just you know saying. what? You know what? I bet Let's if you, start a thing. when you get a vaccine, I, I bet it's quicker. That I don't even. I think it'd be oh, quick, yeah. quicker than the length of that song. Yeah, and then you'll be like, "Have you done it?" And they'll be like, "Yeah." And you'll be like, "Oh." oh but oh. actually, I really like getting a little, like a little treat after, after oh, yeah. I've had a vaccination, yeah. like a sticker. No, a chocolate. Oh, Smarties. Yeah. Sticker and Smarties. There you go. <laughs> Always worth it. So look, I <laughs> love stories from science history. All right, yeah. you know, you lot know that I love a story from science history, um, and I want to tell you a story. A story of what some people say was the first ever vaccine. Mm. Um, but to tell you this story, I'm going to need to slip into something a little bit more comfortable. Well, aren't you all about the fancy dress today? Yep. He's off. He's off. OK, well, whilst Greg is doing that, why don't I sort of like see what you've been up to in the live chat? Um, so we asked you if you know anyone who's had uh, a vaccination. Uh, Burge says their daddy is having the vaccine soon. Fantastic. Um, Adam's dad has had their vaccine. Grace says her mum, Nan and granddad have had theirs. Uh, Teddy's grandparents, Auntie Melanie, they've had their vaccinations. Who else? All of Olivia and Jacob's grandparents have had theirs. Oh, um, Hannah, William and Samantha's great uncle is helping to give vaccines. So thank you so much to your uncle for all of his really hard work. Uh, Greg's ready. <laughs> Wow, he's um uh, nice, dressed as a cow. What's all yes. this about then? Yes. You're a cow. I'm not any old cow, right? Who are you? I then? am Miss Blossom. Uh, well, hello there, Miss Blossom. Hi, hi everyone. Would you all like to say hello to Miss Blossom? I mean, say hi. hi in the live chat if you're watching hi. live. <laughs> uh, look, all right, look, you might be laughing, all right? And that's absolutely <laughs> fine. But the story goes that Miss Blossom actually helped a scientist called Edward Jenner uh, invent vaccines. Of course, right. You see, back in 1786, Miss Blossom here, <clears throat> very nice, <laughs> was a little bit unwell with a germ that caused a disease called cowpox. Cowpox. Okay, so mm. the germ that caused cowpox mm -hmm. wasn't very dangerous. No. But the story goes that Edward Jer Jenner noticed that if a, uh, a human caught cowpox, which happened quite often for milkmaids who were milking cows, right, to get their milk. After the milkmaids had had that mild cowpox, mm -hmm. they actually were protected. They didn't catch a nastier illness, a more dangerous one called smallpox. Okay, so cowpox and smallpox. So this gave Jenna an idea. He deliberately gave somebody, a young lad called James Phipps, this mild cowpox to test whether if he had it, he would then be protected against the nastier smallpox. Mm. And he was. Once he had had the less dangerous cowpox, he then didn't get ill with smallpox. This led Jenna to start uh, vaccinating people, mm -hmm. giving them a small part of this pretty safe, kind of harmless cowpox mm -hmm. to protect them against dangerous smallpox. Yeah, Jenna didn't know the science behind why this worked because at the time people didn't know what germs were yet. But now we know why this worked because we understand germs. Cowpox and smallpox mm. are different viruses, but they're from the same family. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're different viruses, but because they're from the same family, they have the same surface structures. They some those same tools, those same sticky out bits. Right. Yeah. So giving someone mild cowpox meant that uh, their immune system had a chance to practice, to look at the surface structures, to make the antibodies bodies that would fit on top of them. Right. To protect them from that mild cowpox so that then if the nastier smallpox came along in the future, they've already practiced. They recognize the same surface structures, cover them up, means you don't catch smallpox. Exactly. But if I hadn't have had this first and I had just gone and got uh, smallpox straight away, then I would have got quite sick. Yes, absolutely. There and this go. was the start of a large scale vaccination. Mm -hmm. No one in the world actually gets sick from cowpox anymore. So All thanks to Blossom. Blossom the cow. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, do you want a cool fact? I would love one. Okay, here's my cool fact. Why are vaccines called vaccines? This sounds like the start of a joke, but uh, go on then. Why, why are vaccines called vaccines? Well, the word vaccination 
that comes from uh, the name that Jenna used for cowpox. It was uh, variola vaccinia. Latin. Uh, which comes from the Latin for cow, vacca. Oh, okay. So the word vaccine comes from the fact that it first involved a cow. Yep. That deserves a fact bomb, I think. Uh... Hey. <laughs> that wasn't a fact bomb, that was a moo. There we go. There we go. That's better. That's better. <laughs> so Miss Blossom, uh, Milkmaid and James Phipps, they might have helped um, Dr. Edward Jenner develop the vaccines, which is fantastic. But um, the way vaccines are developed these days, in modern times, is very different. Yes. Now, over the past year, scientists and doctors around the world have been working incredibly hard to create a vaccine to protect us against the type of coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Yeah. And the vaccines they've made work slightly differently. So let's start with a recap mm -hmm. of what we learned in our previous show. Yeah. So a virus has three important parts. The first is its genetic material. These are a set of instructions for how it works. The second is the virus's envelope that yeah. holds that genetic material. Mm -hmm. And the third essential part of a virus is those unique surface structures on the outside of the envelope. Got those it. sticky out tools, right, that we know actually help the virus attach to a cell mm -hmm. in our body. Yeah. Um, now, we told you earlier that some vaccines, right, uh, contain a dead version of the germ. Mm -hmm. Some Got vaccines it. are different. Some vaccines contain parts of the germ, like just the surface structures. Yeah, like Dave was doing. Now, the vaccines for the coronavirus uh, that causes COVID-19 are a little bit different. Yeah, because these vaccines contain just part of the genetic material for that coronavirus. Yes, this is the thing. So the COVID-19 vaccines contain a bit of the instructions to make coronavirus, but they aren't harmful by themselves. So the vaccine doesn't make someone sick. When you have uh, the vaccines, your, your body's cells read those instructions, right? And they start making lots of the coronaviruses uh, outside surface structures, and it makes yeah. loads of them. I kind of think of this, right? Yeah. As it's like getting somebody else's Ikea order, right? <laughs> and you open it up and you yeah. read the instructions and you follow the instructions and you start making like chess yeah. drawers or something. And you're like, hang on, I didn't order this chest of drawers. Yeah. And also, I've got no space for chest of drawers in my house. Right, and we know that cells work a little bit like factories, so they've kind of got this information and they're like, yeah. I guess I should make surface structures. So what happens is the COVID-19 vaccine, with that part of the genetic information inside it, makes your cells factories make all of these um, outside surface structures, but they're not harmful to us, right? And then what happens is the same as before, your white blood cells spot these strange new surface structures and they make antibodies to fit over the top of them. Like that! Yeah, the vaccine has given your immune system something to practice on and it will remember that as well. Remember the shape of those surface structures. It will remember those antibodies. So if in the future actual coronavirus comes along and attacks you, well, what it does now is it goes, oh, I recognise those. And I know what antibodies to make. The immune system's ready. Because Boom. it's done it before. Starts attacking, starts latching onto the surface structures and you are protected. That coronavirus won't make you sick. Way! So that's how the corona, well, the coronavirus uh, vaccine works to help protect us against COVID-19. There Brilliant. are a few different uh, vaccines available for COVID-19. Yeah, one of the two big ones being used in the UK is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which mm. was uh, developed at the University of Oxford with support of UKRI. Yes. Um, so yesterday we got the opportunity to speak to Resh Mikhaila, a scientist who is helping make this vaccine and she works at the Jenner Institute named after Dr. Edward Jenner. Yes, um, she's in the lab when we when we spoke to her. So you hear all this equipment like whirring and spinning around her, which is super cool. It sounds like she's in a spaceship. Yeah, so she's very busy, but we did manage to get a little bit of her time. And this is how our conversation went. Hello, Reshma. Hi, uh. Hi, Greg and Maddie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you guys? Yeah, good, we're really good. good. We're excited to chat to you. Um, what do you do? Like, tell us about your job. 
Um, so I'm, I work as a research assistant and um, I work in the early stages of vaccine development. How long does it take usually to develop a, a vaccine? Um, so usually it takes about a year or so to make a vaccine. Okay. Um, but for we made it within three months. Um, it's because like we have, we've tested similar sort of um, vaccine um, before in different diseases. Um, and everything that needed to be changed in our vaccine was the genetic information that was inserted into the vaccine. Right, so you already had that system, so all you needed to do was get the genetic material from inside the virus that causes COVID-19, and then you could put that yeah. genetic material into the vaccine liquid you already had, and that could just yeah. and then that goes yeah. into us and our body does the rest. If it only took three months to develop the vaccine, why is there, why is there a bit more time till we're able to get it? So there's a lot of um, stages after the de development it, uh, before it goes into human trials, we do an, uh, a lot of other tests. To make sure it's safe for the human yeah. trials and then yeah. the human trials the make human. sure it's safe for everyone to be taking. Yeah. Why is it really important that um, we get as many people vaccinated as possible? I think it's best for everyone to get vaccinated because it stops the virus from spreading um, and especially for people who cannot be vaccinated, like people who are too sick to be vaccinated, um, it's always best that everyone else around them gets vaccinated so we can stop the virus from spreading. Yeah, I think we have to remember that when we get vaccinated, we're not just protecting ourselves, but we're also protecting our community. Because if we are vaccinated, then we are less likely to spread it to somebody who, somebody else or to someone who might even be vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, and this is where this yeah. idea of herd immunity comes in, the idea that you're protect, protecting your herd, not just one person. Yeah. By That's true. Vaccinated. Rashma, yeah. before we say goodbye, um, what does it feel like to get to work on something that's so groundbreaking, that's going to save so many people's lives? Um, I'm very proud to be a part of this team. Um, like, I would never have even imagined uh, working in such a place, like saving lives. Yeah, if you could speak to your teenage self, imagine, or you as a kid, imagine being like, you're going to be working on a vaccine that's going to save loads of lives. <laughs> never. I would never imagine I would, I would be doing this. No, it, it, but you are part of history like that's yeah. that's true like you really are um so yeah thank you so much for all of your hard work and the team's hard work and also for chatting to us today we really appreciate it no worries thank, thank you so much bye bye, bye. bye. Thank you again to Reshma there for, you know, having a conversation with us. And yeah, we really enjoyed that. So thank you. Yeah, it was so awesome. Um, lots more of you are getting in touch in the live chat as well um, about vaccines and people in your family who've already been vaccinated. Chloe and Freya's mummy has had the Oxford vaccine. Um, Evan's grandma has had hers. Joshua's mum and dad have both had theirs. Um, who else? We have got, oh, Millie's mum has had the vaccine. Uh, lots of grandparents are all sorted as well. So that's great news. Really I, good. I've really love these last two shows mm. um i think sometimes the idea of viruses and of vaccinations can be a little bit scary yeah. but the more we know the more we understand it then the less scary they are but also it's incredible how not only how our own immune system helps fight off germs but also how scientists have been able to make something that can hopefully prevent us from getting sick in the first place yeah Ooh. and how quickly they've done it yeah. um that is nearly us done for the day but we're not done yet we have a few more of your photos Stay with us. on the way right we want to show some of your costumes <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and they're so good before that we'd like to do a few thank yous uh, and we've also got some announcements including our birthday show announcement yeah, uh, firstly, a big thank you to UKRI for supporting this week's shows. Yes, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you to Reshma for coming on the show uh, mm -hmm. today. A huge thank you to our friend as well, the marvellous microbiologist that is Marin Hunsberger for helping us out a lot with this week. Thank you, Marin. Marin is also uh, the co-host of the podcast that uh, you do together, didn't you? Yes, uh, Plug. plug uh it's called surprisingly brilliant it's a podcast <laughs> of stories from science history yeah. uh, and in fact actually one of our episodes is all about uh edward jenner and miss blossom oh. uh, I don't know where she is she's, she's over, over there, there. <laughs> she's over there so i'm gonna lie down um i will say that that is, a, that is a gruesome one so it's probably for the older ones yeah <laughs> yeah um but now though announcement yes. so although 
many of you are returning to schools next week, mm. we are going to be doing two uh, special Let's Go Lives on Tuesday and Thursday at 11am, so same time as normal. And we're doing it because it's British Science Week, so yeah. we just couldn't resist it. We couldn't resist, and in those, uh, those two shows next week, we will be exploring... The future. future. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're teaming up with the British Science Association for British Science Week to explore the future of cities, food, transport and entertainment as we wonder what is our world going to look like in the future and how are we going to experience it's it? It's going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that lots of you will be returning to school next week, but we'd love for loads of you to either watch back later uh, or to join us live, maybe in class with your classmates. Yeah, to tell your teachers about it. Yeah. Um, and as we mentioned, coming up is the Let's Go Live first birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> and we are throwing a party. Mark it in your diary, folks. March the 23rd. Uh, you know, March the 23rd, that is one year since we did our first ever Let's Go Live show. Yeah, we really, really want to celebrate this um, with you. So you are all invited and we would love you to be there. But because uh, we would love to do this live and we want as many of you to join as possible, we're going to do it at 4pm. So after school, March 23rd, 4pm. That's it. We're done. Announcement's done. Woohoo! And <laughs> um, can we have a look at some more of their costumes? Yeah, you've been so dressing good. up too. So good. All right, let's have a look at some of your costumes. Okay. First um, one. Amelia dressed up as a germ. She used a feather boa as the flagella of a bacteria, <gasps> and she made a white blood cell costume too. So good. Here's Jonathan dressed as a virus. Uh, Jonathan broke into the human body, the house, mm. through the windows and the doors. Uh, look out! Because here is bacteria, David Seller. <laughs> Look, we can see that bacteria through the microscope. So good. Uh, Phoebe made her virus costume from lots of recycling. She then spent the day trying to sneak in, avoiding the white blood cells, who are her big brother, Thomas. That sounds like a fun game. Um, Louis had dressed as a parasite. <laughs> Look, he's looking from left to right as he's, as he's looking for a host. Meet the holly virus. Ooh. It makes you have a snotty nose and there's no medicine for it. Oh, no. Um, Ollie is a white blood cell fighting off all the germs trying to enter the human body, a.k.a. the living room. <laughs> um, and lastly, we've actually got a video. Uh, two people have got dressed up and they're sort of reenacting a snotty moment. Love this. Uh, the bubbles are bogeys. <laughs> I am Muta and I am here to infect human body. Found a way in. Hey, virus! You're not gonna um, ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> So good. Love so it. So good. Love it, love it, love it. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, before we go, uh, some birthdays. Yeah, we've got some, got lots of birthdays actually. Yeah, so we've got a couple from yesterday. Yeah, so yesterday, Abigail turned 10 and Harry turned 5. Happy birthday to you. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's going to be a moo sound. Without... <laughs> I thought it was going to be a moo. <laughs> We've had confusion with that in the past. <laughs> okay, um, whose birthday is it today? Is today. It you... uh, Maggie is 8 today. Amelie's birthday is today as well. Uh, and Ina is 6 today. Yay. Happy <laughs> birthday, everyone. To you and to everyone else whose birthday is today. Yeah. Um, let's do a couple for tomorrow as well. Tomorrow Happy birthday. The... Yep. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Dylan is six tomorrow. Happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday, Dylan. Uh, Vicky's birthday tomorrow as well. And also Harry is going to be seven at the weekend. So yeah. happy birthday to all of you. Oh, awesome. Yay. All right. Sadly, it's going to be pretty much time for us to go. If you're watching back, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Uh, let's say some goodbyes to you lot watching live. Let's do some schools first. All um, right. I've got a few that I spotted. Yeah. Uh, Fairsley Junior School in Ooh. Southampton. Yeah, Fair Isle Junior School. Oh, Who else yeah, have we got? We've got Anson Primary. Oh, hello. Uh, and Downshire Primary as well. Oh, and let's say goodbye to some people as well. We've got Jasper in Birmingham and Ollie in Liverpool. Goodbye. We've got Casey, Sophie and Luna are all watching live for the first time, you legends. It's the 80th show, but we're so <laughs> glad to have you. You've made a good choice, ladies. <laughs> Who else uh, have we, we got? got? We have got uh, James in Southend and Thomas in Hertfordshire. Uh, Jessica and Charlie. 
Who else have we got? Maisie, Sunny and Meadow. Uh, we've got Kyra and Ava. Uh, we've got Cameron, Tristan, Seb, Rosie, Jemima, Connor and Honey. You are all watching live. We've got Artie, Rihanna, Luke, Ada, Eva, George and Phoebe. Oh. You're all watching live as well. Goodbye, everybody. Thank au you au so au. much. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed these shows. Um, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the new Science Activities website that we've yes. got. Make sure you do check that out. Here it's you go. It's packed. It is absolutely packed for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be putting some new new activities up on there very, very soon. Yeah, Ooh. I think Mini Makers is the next to go Mini up. Mini Makers is the next Something one like to go up. 15 activities we did in Mini Makers Week alone, if not 19. more. 19. 19 activities. 19 new activities going up wow. very, very soon. All right then, well, we will see you on Tuesday at 11 a.m. for the first of our Futurology shows. Yeah. It's going to be great. Um, but yeah, until then, stay curious. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. See ya.